These are live pictures coming from that very airport that you're describing, uh, Casey Singh, where you've got the, the Air China Boeing 747 uh, from which President Jinping will be disembarking any moment from now, protocol fully in place. These are live pictures. It's a slightly overcast day, as you can see in these live pictures there uh, in Ahmedabad, that gleaming Boeing 747, which has transported the President of China after stopovers in Maldives and Sri Lanka, now there in Ahmedabad to kickstart a three-day visit which will begin with a meeting on the banks of the Sabarmati River. I want to bring in Gaurav who's right there in Ahmedabad getting us these pictures. So there you have it. Uh, officials, protocol officials disembarking from the aircraft any moment now. These are real-time live pictures here on headlines today. That's, uh, that's the aircraft from which the Chinese president will be disembarking in just a moment from now, several Indian officials, including Prime Minister Modi himself, Chief Minister Anandi Ben Patel is also there to receive. There you have it. There's President Jinping and the First Lady of China getting out of the plane. They'll be walking down the stairs right now to be greeted by Indian officials and formally, officially welcomed to India. The President carries with him a huge number of expectations from a country with the world's largest population to the country with the world's second largest population. Can these two big countries put history aside and formulate and evolve a much more synergistic and cooperative relationship? There have been troubles in the past. There has been tension in the neighborhood. There is a border dispute that has continued to fester for decades together. But can President Jinping and Prime Minister Modi begin to evolve a framework, a roadmap for a relationship that can see a greater degree of predictability, a greater degree of cooperation, a greater degree of peace, a greater degree of bonhomie, and certainly a greater degree of mutual prosperity between the two great ancient civilizations in India and in China. The burden of expectations, make no mistake, are on both sides. And Casey Singh, I want to, I want to, you know, uh, you know, sort of tap your wisdom on that as well. It's also about what the new generation of, you know, rulers in China expect going forward in this relationship with India, is it not? Oh, firstly, a very mundane thing which just occurred to me because we don't have a first lady. Yes. Uh, so, in a sense, the chief minister, being a lady, will function as uh, as uh, as the uh, hostess for the first lady. Oh, right. So interesting point. When very President very Xi interesting met, point. Yes. Yeah. When pre when pre President Xi had met President Obama in California, uh, the first lady was not visible because apparently Michelle Obama had they said refused to go down there to California. Right. So you did not see the Chinese first lady at all. So uh, the advantage in Ahmedabad is at least there is the chief minister who can then, uh, you know, uh, take the first lady around. Yes, yes, that's yes. That's the first thing. Oh, Sec that's interesting. Yes. Yeah. And secondly, well, this, yeah, this is the second time uh, uh, President Xi, Xi Jinping is coming to India. But last time he was not the president when he came here. Correct. Yes. He is, in a sense, there's another commonality between the two men. Even though Xi Jinping is called a princeling because his father was a high functionary in the Communist Party mm. and a compatriot of Mao Zedong. Uh, but he went through a very difficult period in the youth during the Cultural Revolution when his father was jailed and he was sent to a village to live as a peasant. So there, that is something where he and Mr. Modi, Modi having had a hard, uh, a hard youth where he worked his way up, they both seen those days, though for President Xi Jinping it was a, sh it was a shorter period. Uh, uh, which has shaped him. Yes. So there is there is that commonality. But both both of them now, one a princeling and one who's worked his way up, uh, one who went into wilderness, came back and then again worked his way up. They are the two preeminent leaders of the two major countries of, of Asia and two neighbors, two rising powers, uh, which will decide. And another coincidence is that 100 years ago, the First World War yes. started when you had five major powers in Europe with the rise of Germany. Uh, and here also we have five major powers in Asia. You've got Russia, Japan, China, India and US uh, competing for space in Asia. How do they do it? They don't need to repeat the history of 20th century and go to war. They need to create a new format and what is created between India and China will be really a format of either orderly peaceful rise or a future fraught with friction, uh, maybe even uh, hostilities. 
so that is something which bur burden is on both these leaders huge amount of a burden on both these leaders there's history there's personality there's the burden of expectations from uh, the, the the political establishment on both sides as well as the people now the the, the, the forms of government in both India and China may be vastly different. India is, after all, a democracy. It's touted as a, great, uh, as, as, as a great advantage and in many ways a great disadvantage given the manner in which China has, has sort of propelled itself forward as an economic powerhouse. But take a look. Let's just listen into some of these live pictures coming up. A short guard of honor uh, ceremony for the visiting president of China who's just arrived. A great degree of detail paid to every bit of protocol at the airport there to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. Obviously, goes without saying that there's a huge amount of security as well for this particular visit. That's happening not in Delhi, but in Ahmedabad, twin city to the Gujarat capital of Gandhinagar. And that is where the first meeting will take place between Prime Minister Modi and President Xi Jinping. Anand Krishnan, our correspondent in Beijing, in Beijing is with us back on the phone line uh, for a quick word uh, on this. Uh, Anand, the burden of expectations, Casey Singh and I were just talking about the burden of expectations, you know, what the leadership of China really expects from this particular visit, what the new generation of leaders really expects from this particular visit. Uh, you know, is it in any way a match for the sort of almost incongruously large expectations that exist in India from pretty much everything that Prime Minister Modi does? I think the expectations in comparison in China are somewhat more measured. But at the same time, there's a hope that for a relationship that has sort of been held hostage by the boundary dispute, that this could set a new paradigm for engagement where the border isn't always the biggest elephant in the room. But whether that materializes, we'll have to wait and see, depending on the agreements that are to be announced in the next three days. Well, over the next three days, we'll have to see, uh, you know, precisely what those burden of expectations will really mean. Anand, thanks for that. Uh, Casey Singh, I want to bring you back in, uh, you know, on a slightly more mundane level, you know, on the protocol surrounding this entire affair. You know, like you pointed out, the thing to note here is these are live pictures coming from the Sardar Vallabhai Patel International Airport in Ahmedabad. It's not the Indira Gandhi International Airport in Delhi or the Palam Technical Area where VVIPs usually land when they come on visits of this kind. Uh, you know, what is the message there? What's the message there that, uh, you know, this is a visit that sort of moves beyond Delhi? It's a captured a lot of imaginations. Well, as I said, this kind of a reception has not been... Uh uh, Indian political leaders have not been present outside Delhi for a ceremonial reception. Uh, reception, normally the governor would be there and the chief minister would be there and the minister in waiting would go from Delhi. But for the prime minister himself to be there and he is in a state where he has been chief minister from where he has risen, uh, it's fraught with all kinds of symbolism and they're going, uh, Pre President Xi Jinping will be going to Sabarmati Ashram uh, to uh, pay respects to Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, which is another symbol and they'll be dining again on the banks of the river just a short distance away from the Sabarmati ashram is the Chinese president sending a signal of peace of amity of Gandhian thought we don't know but these are as yet you can put any construct you want on them but these are all positive signals uh, real work would have been already been done between the two delegations uh, it's not that the two leaders will be negotiating the agreements and all would already would already have been thrashed out but I think what is required at this level is really chemistry 
do the teacher but sometimes even the chemistry goes wrong because you remember when president bush met president putin he said at that stage i looked into his eyes and i saw his soul and the soul was very pure and you know how the russian us relations went yes so sometimes these engagements which can show chemistry but then uh, leaders are great performers uh, they are used to this in political life uh, they they'll conceal their feelings but they will measure each other out i don't place that much of a of of emphasis on chemistry overriding yes. fundamental strategic interests uh, but yes chemistry can help when they are sticking points and chemistry can soften the blows uh, but overall chemistry cannot be a substitute for basic hard diplomacy and balancing of strategic interests very interesting point that you make there uh, live pictures let's take them full frame of uh, the protocol a uh, protocol rituals being accorded to president jinping who's just arrived in amdabad not in delhi the chinese president's visit to india will be the first head of a major foreign state to start a visit from gujarat not from delhi where he will preside over the signing of a slew of deals cooperative agreements between india and china three memoranda of understanding he will also be having dinner with prime minister modi today it's his birthday today highlighting the importance of new delhi attaching to ji's visit modi will receive modi has received personally received the chinese president just moments ago there at the airport these are live pictures coming in of the protocol there at the sardar vallabhbhai patel international airport remember that state visits to india generally start off in the national capital as kc singh and i have been talking about from where foreign dignitaries go to other cities if they are on their tour plan but this one unlike any other has begun in gujarat narendra modi the prime minister arrived in amdabad on tuesday and he said that visiting heads of state should travel beyond new delhi and have a look at other parts of india is that what this is all about remember that china has major investments in gujarat as well and that is something that the indian government will be looking to build upon in a big way in china is expected to commit at least 6.5 billion dollars worth of investments and purchase agreements from indian companies in the form of memoranda of understanding and actual agreements and deals before this particular visit is over the visit for which elaborate security arrangements have been made will be witnessing the signing of at least three memoranda of understanding between china and gujarat specifically modi's home state full proof security in place for the president's visit the gujarat police with the help from central security agencies have made all necessary arrangements what you're seeing on your screen are live pictures of the protocol welcome for the chinese president uh, uh kc singh just bear with me while i just list out for our viewers uh, some of the things that we've been able to get uh, i'm reading out from a press tra press trust of india a release listing some of the things on the table uh, between both sides and this is just a matter of detail uh, one of the memoranda of understanding to be inked between the chinese develop the china development bank and the industrial extension bureau of the gujarat government relates to development of industrial parks in the state that's something that uh, kc singh touched upon another pact will be signed between china's guangdong province and the gujarat government and a third mou will be signed between guangzhou and amdabad the two cities for a cultural exchange they will be sibling cities remember that when when narendra modi was in japan earlier this month there was an agreement about converting varanasi his parliamentary constituency into another kyoto of japan now a similar kind of arrangement could be on between guangzhou and amdabad as far as a cultural exchange is concerned we'll have to see about what happens as far as infrastructure is concerned top industrialists from both countries are going to be taking part in a business meet a delegation level business meet between both sides the dinner tonight is to be served at a dome on the sabarmati river front and our information is of course that it will consist of gujarati delicacies and attended by at least 22 vvips
Okay, we're going to slip into a very quick break. KC Singh is still with me. We're going to bring you these live pictures and put out the very latest from what you can expect from President Xi Jinping's visit to India, starting from right there at the Sardar Patel International Airport in Ahmedabad. We've got live coverage here non-stop of President Xi Jinping's visit to India that began just a short while ago with his aircraft landing at the Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel International Airport in Ahmedabad. The, the meeting between the two presidents, uh, between the president and India's Prime Minister at the airport has happened. Prime Minister Modi was there, so was Chief Minister of Gujarat, Anandi Ben Patel. There will be a meeting today and dinner at the Sabarmati waterfront where elaborate arrangements have been made for both leaders to begin this meeting that is being seen by some quarters as potentially historic between the visiting Chinese president and India's prime minister. A great deal of history, the burden of expectations of two countries with the world's largest populations behind them, a history of trouble, a history of conflict. But can both sides look forward now? This isn't by any stretch of imagination the first high-level exchange between India and China. India's own Prime Minister visited China earlier this year. But what are the expectations between both sides? Where can things go from here? Can personality take over everything else? How complex really are the relations between India and China at this point. Remember, the one thing that you will see in newspapers and across channels, including here on Headlines today, is while a meeting takes place, this engagement takes place between the two big leaders of India and China, there is a standoff in a remote area of Ladakh, where Chinese settlers have encroached on Indian territory across the line of actual control. The Indian Army is engaged and has asked for another flag meeting after a flag meeting yesterday didn't really serve much purpose and didn't make much headway. But hundreds of miles away from where these live pictures are coming from in Ahmedabad, there's a big meeting and bigger expectations because the Chinese president himself is right there. And hundreds of miles away from here in Ahmedabad, in Delhi, there are protests by Tibetans. So this is a complex issue. This is a complex relationship between India and China. It's easy to look at it as a milestone, a potentially milestone visit by the Chinese president. But the burden of expectations are sometimes much greater than what actually happens across the table. Who better to break it down for us than KC Singh, former secretary in the External Affairs Ministry and a person who has been part of delegation level visits to several countries including China in the past. Uh, Mr. Singh, how do governments, uh, you know, including this one, since you've been in government, how do governments, you know, manage public perceptions of a relationship uh, as complicated as the one between India and China, popular perceptions, the burden of expectations, you know, things said in the media, you know, governments can, you know, you know, can afford to ignore some of these things, but can they afford to be completely insulated from the expectations out there? No, I think in today's, uh, today's age, uh, where it's not just uh, newspapers and television, it's social media. Absolutely. Uh, perception becomes extremely important and very important to manage. And uh, to the common man, this is not uh, uh, easily understood, how you can have this confrontation there. And the obduracy shown by the PLA and uh, ban Baja Bharat in Ahmedabad. Uh, now this will be incumbent on the government to explain it uh, and explain it in their terms simply to say all issues are on the table, border will be discussed is not good enough. Yes. I think what you need to uh, explain to the public is uh, that that is a separate issue. The Chinese are simply emphasizing that that is not off the table, that is on the table. But it's a very crude Chinese way of conveying it. And they seem to do this every time and we don't seem to have a way past it that they don't realize that it Im then they will turn around and say the Indian media is somehow controlled by the government and it's government of India right. which is making this channel and other channels take up this issue well they have to realize that this is a free country and you cannot have this kind of an approach absolutely where you vitiate the atmosphere yourself okay and then through the front door you come in with garlands 
uh, in uh, you know uh, uh, held out to you kc singh well, uh, i'm, I'm going to come is, back think, to that uh, issue in just a moment from now i want to get a little deeper into that issue because it's something that interests and concerns us as a country and uh, our viewers definitely will want to know more about how things actually go forward in an engagement where like you said you've got a front door meeting with great cordiality and yet potential friction far away hundreds of miles away in a remote part of the actual frontier